So now we're going to look at the chain rule of differentiation for multivariate functions. So one is say w uh, z is a function of uh, x y, and suppose that furthermore that x itself is a function of t, okay, some function of t, and y is some function of t as well. So there are three variables, um, the, well, uh, two independent variables um, that z depends on and x and y themselves depend on uh, t. Now in such a situation, if we wanted to calculate, for instance, um, someone asks us, what is dz dt? Well, obviously, if we want to calculate dz dt first, we have to go through f. So we would calculate the partial derivative of f with respect to x and then x with respect to t. And then we'll have the partial derivative of f with respect to y, okay, and the derivative of y with respect to t. So um, that's because if we want to calculate the derivative of d, t, sorry, uh, with respect to t, clearly we see that both x and y are functions of t. And since z is a function of both of these, we need to look at the x derivative. And of course, uh, since x is dependent on t, we'll multiply it by dx dt. We take out the y derivative, of course, and multiply it by dy dt. Now, the other way you can also look at it is look at the connection here with this x and this x, all right? And if you were to um, sort of cancel these two out, you'd be left with ft. So it would be just with respect to t. Similar things happening here. This is just to sort of remember how what's going on to help help you remember the how the chain rule works. So here, the if you could cancel these two, all that would be left is just um, an ft. Uh, so just to uh, reflect. So anyway, that's how the chain rule works. Let's look at a quick example. So here's a quick example. Z equals x, y. X is a function of um, x is cosine t and y is sine t. So and the question, of course, is now, of course, if someone asks us what is partial z by x or partial z by y, that's quite straightforward. And there is no chain rule really required for that. However, the interesting question would be if we are asked what is dz dt? OK, well, dz dt uh, is simply, according to the chain rule, which uh, the one you see here, it's the same one that we're going to be using. So we need uh, ingredients for this, which is the partial fx, uh, the dx dt, partial fy, and dy dt. So in order to calculate them, let's, let's, let's do them on the side here. So for instance, the one of the things we need is partial fx. So partial fx is going to be just uh, y partial um, fy is going to be just x and then we have um, dx dt so dx dt is going to be minus sine t and dy dt um, is going to be cosine t so now let's put all these pieces together here into the formula uh, and of course, I'm talking about this, uh, the same one, DZD partial, DZDT is all of these. So I'm going to substitute these values as you see them here. Okay. And what that gives us is partial FX is, of course, Y. And that's multiplied by DX DT, which is minus sine T. Okay. And then we have plus uh, y, FY, which is X, and that's multiplied by cosine T. Okay, so now, of course, you can't leave the, uh, the answer in this form because it's useless. Um, we need to um, get rid of the y and the x. And for that, of course, we go to these definitions here. Okay, uh, and that means that dz dt ends up being y is uh, sine t. So this will become minus sine squared t plus uh, x is cos t. So it'll be cosine squared t. And you can check your uh, trigonometric identities. That's actually equal to cosine 2t. It's cos squared t minus sine squared t, which is cosine 2t. So, so that's our answer. Now, of course, there is an alternate way. You don't have to use a chain rule at all. And what would that be? Well, what you could do in that case, uh, in uh, an alternate way of doing the same question, would be that you, in fact, convert z into t uh, in terms of write z in terms of t. Uh, 
to start with. So you have cosine t times sine t. That can be written as half sine 2t. Okay. And that's just from trigonometric identities. And that implies that dz dt is half into 2 um, cosine t. Oh, sorry, cosine 2t. Rather. And the 2 and the 2 here cancels. So it's equal to cosine 2t as, uh, as above. So it's the same answer. So there are two ways to do this. Now, of course, you, you need to understand the mechanism of the chain rule. Here, it's quite straightforward to substitute the value in. Um, and usually, it is quite easy to substitute the value in. However, in many situations, it may be more difficult. And sometimes, you want to see the structure of how different parts of the um, relationship between the variables work. So let us move on now to uh, the second case of the chain rule where we have, and in this case, I will look at a three variable situation so that you understand that it's not limited to two variables. It can be n variables, in fact. And now what's happening is we're, we're assuming that this is a function g of, um, for instance, st, and y is a function h of st, okay, and z is a function k of st for the sake of argument. And now if somebody asks us, okay, what is partial w by partial s? Now there are no more complete derivatives because all, all the variables, as you can see, um, all the independent variables x, y, and z are also dependent on more than one variable. So therefore there's no idea, there's no concept of a, a complete derivative anymore. Um, we're really looking at, for instance, partial w by s in this case. And the way it works is, of course, okay, partial f by x and then partial x by s plus partial f by y and partial y by s plus partial f by z and partial z by s. So what you should notice the pattern here is that when we are calculating other than these three variables, the derivative is other than these three variables. In other words, it's one of these two, then the chain rule applies. Now, when the chain rule does apply, when you're calculating um, s or t, okay, the thing is you'll have you'll have to take the var the derivative of f with respect to x, with respect to y, and with respect to z. And if there's another variable, you'll take the derivative with respect to that as well. And in all cases, you have you will have this. Um, the x, uh, whatever this is here, this x, then you'll take the x with respect to this s here. Okay, so the, the, you'll see these. This is the pattern that uh, is clearly ha um, should be obvious to you, hopefully. So it's, that's happening here as well, and that's happening here as well. So you know, you'll see this x, this y, this y, this z, this z. Let me change color a little bit here. Um, and uh, this s, I'm going to change that, and this s, and this s, and this s here. So they're all the same, uh, basically. So just, just to give you an idea of how it works. Now, in a similar way, we could also calculate the partial w by uh, t, for instance. And partial w by t is, again, fx, xt, plus fy, uh, yt, plus uh, z and zt. Okay, so that's how that works. Now, by the way, you could increase this further, and instead of st, suppose you had stu, then you would be, uh, then you would be, there'd be no change in these variables. I mean, I mean, there'd be no difference in, 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 in the chain rules here. The only thing is you'd be able to calculate partial w by u in, in that case, okay? Okay, so let's look at this situation. Here um, we have an example where w is um, uh, x squared plus y squared plus z squared and the three definitions in terms of s and t. So if I wanted to calculate w s, uh, that's what I want to calculate for instance. So let me just run that one second. So if I want to calculate w s, this means I'm going to be using this uh, formula here. So as you can see, the ingredients I require for that are as follows. And I, I'm going to shift, by the way, sorry. Let's just shift to the shorter notation. So we're looking for fx. Now fx is going to be 2x. Fy is going to be 2y. 
and fz is going to be 2z. Now what else do we need? We need xs. So xs is xs is 1 um, xt or sorry, we're not looking for t, pardon me. So we're interested in finding uh, remember, we're interested in finding partial w by s, okay? So we need xs, we need ys, ys is 1, and z, z and zs is, uh, is t, okay? So if we look at this, we have fx, ss, uh, so w, ws in that case is equal to fx, which is 2x, multiplied by xs, which is 1, plus fy, which is 2y, multiplied by ys, which is 1, plus um, 2z into t. Okay, so we have this, and finally, we can convert. Uh, x is s plus t, so it's going to be 2 into s plus t, plus 2 into s minus t, plus... 2s t squared. Okay, so that's basically um, uh, the chain rule here. Now, again, as I said, you can, of course, uh, very uh, you know, do the following, which is you could go and, in fact, uh, put um, calculate w as s plus t squared plus s minus t squared plus s squared t squared. Now you could easily do that and then calculate ws. But be weary that um, uh, that you should be uh, you should understand the chain rule and how it works. Um, it is quite important because here we're looking at very straightforward and simple relationships where this um, this itself turns out to be quite simple. In other situations, this uh, this uh, mixing of the variable or, or sorry, this transformation may be much more complex. In any case, it is important for you to know the structure of how the chain rule actually works.